Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from Dell Storage Forum in Boston. We're day three, getting towards wrapping up. Uh, joining me for my co-host for this segment is uh, John MacArthur from Walden Tech, and our special guest uh, for this segment is Laz Vekarides. Uh, Laz, welcome back to, to Laz, welcome back to the Cube. Thanks. So, uh, you know, we had to squeeze you in the schedule. You're really busy here. A lot of announcements going on, Dell, and yet it, you were part of the keynote this morning. So, we appreciate you finding the time to come in here. So, uh, first of all, you know, what, what's your experience been like this week? Uh, so, I think you kind of summed it up for me. Uh, it, it's uh, it's been jam packed with discussions with all sorts of customers and analysts. Uh, it's you know, I, I really enjoy the feedback. It's it's uh, actually really gra gratifying to actually see so many people uh, really engaged uh, with with our. Product. Products. Uh, on the other hand, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of drinking water from a fire hose. So um, I'm going to probably take three days after this and try and digest what it is that I actually learned. But a um, lot of really good stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm really amazed at, at the, just the the excitement that that's been uh, generated. Uh, a, well, Laz, you know, you, you've been part of kind of the virtualization ecosystem. We find they're high energy people. Can can you just give us for people that aren't familiar with you just a quick synopsis as to kind of your experience coming in from Equalogic, uh, you know, through the Dell acquisition and uh, you know what, what you do today. Oh, okay, um, what it is that I do. Uh, well, so uh, I was actually one of the, uh, the first engineers that came in at uh, Equalogic. I, I was uh, initially running the, uh, what we call the embedded system management team. Uh, so I, I was in charge of, of building uh, pretty much everything that you touch and, and, and see inside of the Equalogic arrays. Uh, and um, my role has grown steadily over the years uh, to touch virtualization outside of the arrays. Uh, uh, you know the you know, virtualization, uh, specifically with Microsoft and VMware. Uh, also, the application infrastructure and the application ecosystems, uh, and uh, a whole bunch of other uh, you know related systems infrastructure projects. And so, uh, right now, uh, you know, after Dell acquired us, obviously everything just became supersized. Uh, I, I now am the executive director of software development, uh, running uh, you know pretty much anything that uh, is not associated with uh, the platform. Uh, so to speak, uh, of the uh, the Equalogic storage. So, uh, you know, anything that's uh, sort of tied to hardware uh, or very specific to hardware is something that I don't do. But all of the uh, much of the firmware, the top half of the stack, and then uh, all of the uh, uh, external software is, um, you know, I get blamed for everything that goes wrong, and um, my smart guys get all the credit when everything is good. That's good so managing. <laughs> so, Laz, as you start, to, you're starting to incorporate solid state disk into some of the some of your products now? Sure. So what kind of, what does that drive in terms of requirements on the software stack? Well, uh, so, you know, for, for many, many years, uh, we've had the benefit of sitting behind some uh, really slow rotating rust, and uh, so you have uh, you have a lot of liberties that you can take. Uh, you can write really bad code. Um, not that we wrote bad code, that's, that's absolutely not true, uh, but uh, o over time, uh, you know, it, it gets tuned to, uh, to, to, to the, the cadence of those disks. Uh, so once you start putting solid state disks in, everything goes much faster, suddenly you realize that you've created bottlenecks. Uh, and, uh, and, and those get unraveled a couple different ways. One, uh, you could actually fix the software, and we've done a fair amount of that. The other, of course, is to get faster compute, and we're doing that as well. Uh, so uh, over time, uh, you know, I think now uh, we're pretty much in good shape to to be all solid state all the time if that's what we really wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I think pretty much everyone says that you know well, that's the future. Uh, and in terms of the interconnect uh, technology directions on interconnects, what are you going to do? Well, uh, so you know that we're uh, we're we're 10 gig. Uh, we support DCB, uh, which is uh, uh, you know a um, uh, protocol in Ethernet that allows uh, a more, um, not necessarily differentiated, but a more reliable, uh, deterministic quality of service from uh, your Ethernet. And uh, at 10 gig, we're now at the point where uh, you know most of those, pretty much all of those pipes are not saturated anymore. So now we're waiting for uh, everyone else to fill them up so that we can have a bandwidth problem. Uh, 40 gig is coming, uh, as you know, uh, it's down the road, and, and uh, clearly we're going to be involved in uh, in upgrading our systems uh, at that point. And then we're going to have yet another set of system ball next that we're going to have to worry about uh, mm -hmm. with the size of the compute behind that. So. It's an exciting time. So, so, so Laz, one, one of the, the, the big trends if you talk about what server virtualization has done is we talk about, you know, 
is the infrastructure meaningful? Palmer has said we're trying to make it invisible. Uh, you know, Steve Herod on the VMware side said we're just trying to kind of automate it and automate it, make it simple. Um, at your keynote this morning, you guys had a, an interesting new vision, uh, talking about your piece, which is the software component of the storage sure. and creating. You called it the host virtualization storage, virtualized storage, or uh, for all those people that love TLAs, it's uh, HVS. HVS. So yes. can, can you give a little explanation? I'm sorry, we don't have the whiteboard here, but you know what is HVS? and uh, what, what does it mean to customers? Well, it, it, you know, basically HVS, uh, we started with the notion of uh, taking the platform specific stuff out of, uh, out of the, the, the package altogether. Uh, what would you be able to do if you could just take the storage management and storage virtualization components uh, that are an ecologic array and apply them to uh, you know, either a generic or virtualized platform? And, and you know that that's really what what HVS uh, you know started out as is uh, you know basically a, a platformless platform uh, that allows you the ultimate in flexibility in determining what your running environment is going to be uh, and you know so you don't have to worry about you know the types of disks or whether they're disks at all they could be memory they could be clouds they could be uh, anything that that you know when you write something and you try and read it back you get what you wrote uh, and so. This this is uh, you know kind of HVS uh, in in, uh, in its elementary stages. Uh, what uh, what's you know transpired over the last few years is that you know the the cloud world has sort of blossomed, and uh, you have uh, a lot more capable high density compute farms out there. Uh, our new 12G servers, uh, for example, are are very interesting uh, in in you know these types of compute uh, environments. You're going to see uh, very very dense compute farms, and um, if we take this HVS thing and um, apply it there, you can get SAN storage or SAN storage management capabilities inside of a, um, a physical environment that doesn't look anything like a SAN. Uh, so uh, the concept that I presented today specifically uh, was uh, the notion that you could take HVS and carve little slices out of a bunch of uh, these these highly dense um, you know server compute farms and build yourself uh, you know a, a group of ecologic arrays uh, and then expose these directly attached storage to applications uh, through iSCSI and it would look just like an ecologic array. Um, this actually provides uh, you know the the service provider with a huge amount of flexibility because now you can you can scale the compute you can scale the storage you can move it around you can add flash if you want you can do all sorts of things and you know as new technologies come in it's very easy to just stick them underneath uh, you know a, a, a virtualized array and and take advantage of them immediately uh, you know clearly there's a lot of software work that still needs to be done in order to fully re uh, realize that vision uh, you know we we would have to you know fix our tiering and do all sorts of other things, but you know, that's stuff that we're doing anyway. And so this is uh, you know, something that I think uh, well, it really resonated with, with uh, me when I, when I first uh, heard about it, and uh, you know, we finally outed it this morning. Yeah. So, uh, so you're, targeting, you're targeting this announcement really towards a, a sort of cloud infrastructure application as a service providers or infrastructure as a service providers, is that? There, there are a number of, of uh, use cases in, in various places. Uh, so today, this morning, the discussion was really, really tailored towards that. Uh, so infrastructure uh, as a service providers or specifically um, there's a brand of provider that has a very homogenous um, uh, infrastructure. It's just a rack of highly dense commodity servers uh, and a switch on top or you know some variation but uh, you know everything is exactly the same. And uh, you, you see a lot of those uh, out there and in, tho in those environments um, you know, they need to be able to service uh, applications that really want to talk SCSI. Right. Uh, and, and those aren't just, by the way, service providers. Uh, there, are, there are actually some very large enterprises out there that are really quite enamored of this particular type of, uh, uh, you know, data center architecture. Uh, but again, everyone runs the same applications, and all the same applications still expect block devices underneath. And so this is, um, you know, I always thought Equalogic was the 
greatest way to manage block anyway. Yeah, so, so, so Laz, you know, <laughs> we, we've had the number to talk to a number of your customers and they, they really spoke well to kind of the scale out and simplicity from the first generation of Equalogic to the most recent, you can put them all together, kind of automatically put them in, take them out. Um, when you talk about scale out architectures, one of the new areas that, you know, obviously we're spending a lot of time on, actually as soon as we wrap up the, the show uh, here at Dell, we're going to be throwing to our West Coast broadcast, uh, which is at Hadoop Summit, sure. is, is big data. Mm -hmm. So do, do you have any commentary on what you see, kind of the Hadoop, the MPP uh, appliances, and the impact on storage? Because at a high level, scale out is, is one of the big pieces. So. Well, you, you, you hit it uh, you know, exactly right on there. Um, so I, I've actually wandered around the, uh, the, the big data world quite a bit recently and looking, looking at a lot of those projects. Uh, you know, and, and Hadoop is one thing. Uh, I think a lot of the uh, the intellectuals that I've uh, I, I've discussed Hadoop with um, are, are sometimes not especially enamored of it. I mean, it it, it does something very well, and and I think a, a lot of people are using it for for that particular use case. But um, the 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 key to, uh, to to having big data, especially if it's unstructured data, is having uh, really really large contiguous chunks of data. Um, and, uh, you know, Hadoop, as you know, is uh, the notion that you, you know, underlying it is the notion that you cut everything up into little chunks. Uh, so how do you reconcile the two? And, and scale out, as you say, is, is a, a, a really interesting concept. And if you really need to have a gigantic, you know, Terra scaled, um, you know, data set. Uh, you need to have. Uh, you know, it's much easier to manage it from a data analysis standpoint if you only needed to access it from one protocol endpoint, and you could have a whole bunch of compute uh, going in through one either logical or physical endpoint uh, to access all of that data. Otherwise, um, you create uh, a, a whole layer of complexity at the next layer up in your system. So things like scale out file, things like scale out block, uh, you know, they, they're necessary building blocks, I believe, ultimately, in what uh, what big data will entail. Um, I, I should note, though, that I'm I'm not that good a prognosticator. Uh, you know, and th th this stuff, if if you talk to the people that are doing it, uh, they're the first to tell you that it's this is we're like version 0.5 of what big data really is going to ultimately become. I mean, the, at the top of the stack is really the analytics, and everyone is really enamored of what you get out of it. Uh, and I'll admit it, it's, it's really sexy stuff. Um, and uh, but the infrastructure is still in the process of of congealing. So um, you know, rather than um, trying to make a, a, a definitive statement on something that seems to be changing by the, uh, the, the minute. Yes. <laughs> Praveen yeah, yeah. said yesterday it was about big insights, not big data, so, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> sure. so even small companies can make uh, big insights out of uh, small amounts of data sure. and properly analyzed. So. So, 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 Laz, you know, as we're getting towards the end of the week, we've heard about, you know, all of Dell's acquisitions, how they're building the portfolio, how the building blocks that all kind of weave together. Equalogic was really the first big piece there. So, from the development standpoint, can you give us a little bit of insight as what from what the engineers, how, you know, what how they work with all of these new acquisitions, how they integrate with, you know, the the workforce that's now quite dispersed. You got the Minnesota guys, the the sure. Texas guys, the Silicon Valley guys. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so jet fuel f solves all sorts of problems, uh, and and in this particular case, it, it does. I think I think um, the Dell has a very um, you know sort of face-to-face -face culture in general. It, it, this is true for any organization that's always been together, but Dell is particularly interesting as you, you think about it. They haven't really been geographically dispersed. I mean, the, the center of gravity has been so. Um, Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much round and, rock. Pretty much round rock. And, uh, yeah. and, and uh, so when we were the only outpost, uh, it was kind of interesting. It was a lonely existence. Um, uh, but you know, I, I think as we brought these uh, these other companies along, uh, we try and meet on you know face to face as much as possible on a regular basis. It's really important to get to know uh, everyone. Uh, and then um, the other thing that we've done, which I think uh, we're doing really well, Carter alluded a little bit to it, but I don't think um, it was. Was really more a subtle illusion than anything else, but uh, you know, we really want to be able to build stuff together, uh, where we're leveraging each other's knowledge and skills, and maybe even the actual you know source code in some cases, so we don't have to build something twice. 
and uh, we've really uh, worked very hard at doing that. It's a, it's a painstaking process because you have to get everyone in a room and they have to hammer out problems and they got to hammer out um, their particular versions of the problem. So you, you, you have to avoid boiling the ocean, you have to um, scope things down to something that's achievable. But uh, you know, the, the other thing that was discussed today, which was the RNA cache, is uh, an example of, uh, of uh, everyone working together to, to build an architecture that's compatible with the entire portfolio. The one thing I will say, it takes a little longer, right? So, you know, the, the RNA acquisition was a, a year ago, and in that particular case, the company didn't really have a shipping product. Uh, so it's a little while before you see the fruits of, of this labor, uh, but, you know, we're really, really uh, adamant about making sure that, you know, we're, we're not building silos. Um, you know, there, I, I should point out there is one. Uh, the, the first thing we did was the Exonet acquisition. Uh, you know, that's that integration has been shipping now with Equalogic for uh, well over a year, uh, and you know, so it, it's kind of the same thing. Um, fly to Israel, meet a lot of guys, um, figure out how this whole thing will work. You know, write code, figure out um, you know why it doesn't really work. It, you, know, you can go back and forth a, a lot, and eventually you, you, you get to a product that's really much more tightly integrated. Yeah. All right, well, mm -hmm. Laz, uh, your, your next meeting's calling. We're getting the hook, so we really appreciate awesome. you uh, <laughs> finding the time to come here. Congratulations on the announcements this week. <laughs> Tremendous progress. We're definitely going to be watching closely the, the new stuff you're demoing and where things are going forward. So welcome back anytime. Hopefully we'll yes, see you at VMworld absolutely. Uh, and some of the other shows. So uh, we will be right back with SiliconANGLE's live continuous coverage from Dell Storage Forum right after this short break.